Okay, next up, we are going to do what looks like will be a deep dive into the tech update um, from Quincy. So take it away. Cool, I uh, assume so you can see these slides. I'm Quincy Morgan, tech lead at OpenStreetMap US. Um, do a lot of different things, but uh, you're gonna see some of them today in terms of development. Um, let's get started. Uh, you may have been to the new website and seen our, I call them the, the app icons for all the different things we do. Um, there's a lot and they each have varying degrees of tech input from the org itself and from outside contributors as well. Um, we're not just one org, of course, we are uh, an, an ecosystem of, of of people that are all working on the OpenStreetMap project and some of the tools live here and some live elsewhere. Um, but the first one I wanna talk about today is field papers. Uh, I We did a talk on this at State of the Map US, uh, myself and Stephanie May. Um, we transferred field papers from Stamen to OpenStreetMap US. Um, so we're really excited to have it. Uh, you can go and search for this talk if you want, but the Cliff Notes version is here and I've stolen some of the slides. Forgive me. Um, you can go to fieldpapers.org and you can make an atlas that you can print out and use to map in the field. Um, you can go and select a location, uh, decide how many pages you want your atlas to be, um, and render that atlas. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long, so make sure you, uh, you don't make a very large atlas by mistake. Um, then you can view that atlas. Uh, and then download a PDF, which will include each individual page. And each page has a QR code that links it back up to uh, the Atlas URL. Um, and you can print this out on any regular printer and take it out in the field and mark it up. You can also view atlases that people have made uh, before if they choose to make them public or that you've made before. Um, here's an example of people using it in a place where uh, there either is just not a good internet connection or there's just not enough resources or sometimes paper mapping is a great way to learn geospatial uh, tools. And then you go back on fieldpapers.org, upload it. Um, your, your snapshots they've taken a picture of, you can view ones that other people have made. And then a tile server will, uh, if things go well, make that available for mapping in the ID editor. Uh, if things don't go so well, then I get a bunch of emails from people that uh, are like, oh, why is it broken? Um, and the truth is, I don't always know why it's broken. It was a project that's it's pretty old at this point, I think uh, seven or eight years old, and it hasn't been updated in a while. And OpenStreetMap US is doing things to maintain that. Um, so we've updated all the dependencies, uh, upgraded to SSL, and we're doing documentation, PR review, uh, all the nice things to, to make the project maintainable and contributable to. Um, but we don't have funding to do everything that we might wanna do with field papers. So we are soliciting help. Uh, if you can, if you're a developer, would would love to have contributions on field papers. It's still a tool that, that people use. Every week I get emails from people who, who wanna use it for this or that, and I can't always uh, help them. But um, if, here's uh, the architecture. If you have experience in Ruby, Python, Node, PHP, uh, or even Java, then we'd love to have you show up in our camp. I'm having a tech talk tomorrow at 12 Eastern, um, or maybe 11 Eastern. You can check the schedule uh, to, to help people uh, get involved with field papers as well as their other tools. So I'd, I'd encourage you to come to that. Also, uh, we have t-shirts now. So if you go to omstreetmap.us slash swag, you can check out all of our swag items, but um, we have some pretty cool white t-shirts and white mugs with uh, the classic field papers designs. And maybe if you contribute, um, we'll send you a free t-shirt. I did not run that past Maggie yet, so uh, <laughs> we'll see, but hopefully um, we'll have some, some incentives like that. Uh, next tools I want to talk to you about in our tool belt are Tasking Manager um, and Public Domain Map. You might think Tasking Manager, that's a humanitarian OpenStreetMap team tool, and it is um, originally, but 
of course it's open source we we forked it we have our own version of it that has a bunch of cool um upgrades to it uh, that are specific to our needs and incorporate public domain map um again there's a state of the map 2023 talk that goes a deep dive into public domain map that I encourage you to go see. Um, but if you're not familiar, uh, the idea of public domain map came about because um, uh, traditional government data uh, is closed at is closed to editing by the public, of course. Um, so they're not getting the benefit of of the crowdsourcing that we have in OpenStreetMap. But OpenStreetMap data can't really be uh, used and redistributed by the government because all the data needs to be in the public domain. Um, so we, we built public domain map as the tool to solve this problem. A uh, periodic reminder, the public domain map is not a second open street map. It is instead a bridge database. So it runs on the open street map stack of technologies and the data can go back and forth between government actors or anyone else that um, uh, uses public domain map data. And then because it's already in the right format, it's easier to transmit into OpenStreetMap. And of course, because public domain, it can go that way, but it, it can't go back because of the ODBL requirements from OpenStreetMap. Uh, technically, PDMAP lives in OpenStreetMap Tasking Manager. If you go to tasks.openstreetmap.us, you can uh, filter to see all the public domain map projects. They're different color, they have different labeling. They live alongside the OpenStreetMap projects on our task manager. Uh, here's one example of something that we're working on um, currently. Uh, North Carolina Emergency Management Agency has requested help with um, refreshing all their building footprints. So what we're doing is importing all the building data they've had from past years, which is pretty high quality data, and then using their imagery to um, to update that using the tasking manager and uh, hopefully contributions from all of you and from the general public. So for for the first time, people can uh, have a direct hand in creating data that is used to, you know, for public safety and for uh, disaster relief and for all government purposes that affect their lives. Uh, one of the upgrades we've made to the public domain map editor is to add a layered uh, not just a tag, but a, a whole system for dealing with different layers of data. If somebody wants building data, but somebody else wants street data and someone else wants railroad data in OpenStreetMap, they all live alongside each other. But um, we don't necessarily want people to, to be able to edit and connect data across um, different domains in the same way. And similarly, if, if uh, we want a different building data set in a couple of years, but the other data we still want in the database for some reason, then that would cause conflicts. So for the first time, we're having uh, ID deal with all of the, the layer issues that come with having various different data sets live in the same area. Uh, so if you have a use case, I encourage you to get in touch uh, by emailing info at publicdomainmap.org or contacting anyone on the OpenStreetMap US team. Uh, the next project I want to talk to you about is our whole new website that I built called OpenStreetMap.us. You've probably seen it. Right now it's repping the uh, the conference. You can find all the information about the conference there. Um, so here's the homepage. And if you scroll down, you'll see those cool app icons that make it easy to, to get an idea of all the things, different things we do. And then if you uh, click an icon, you'll see a glossy project page that gives people an overview of the initiative. Um, you can see links to related posts and videos in every project page. So things don't live in a silo anymore. Everything's tagged and linked together uh, for easy navigation. Say if there's an update on a conference, it might appear in a blog post or might appear um, on the page itself, but they'll link back to each other. Uh, instead of blog posts, actually, we've created um, news items. Uh, which which sort of broadens the scope of our uh, our RSS and and makes it a bit more modern. And if you scroll down on one of the blog posts, it'll link back to any projects that are that are mentioned in that blog post as well. We've uh, included the entire archive of OpenStreetMap US blog posts going back to 2010. There's over 300 items in there. Um, 
we'll be able to, to bring them all over. Uh, some other cool little features that we've added uh, are this gentle event notification. I don't know if anyone saw this while they were browsing the site uh, yesterday or today, um, but it'll say, hey, you've got an upcoming event. And if you click it, it'll go to that page um, and then it'll disappear because you don't wanna keep bothering users. So it's it's pretty unintrusive. But we wanna make sure people are, are seeing the latest content and um, be able to find our upcoming mappy hours and conferences. Um, and uh, a new type of page is the map page, which has um, open um, map tiles style here running on the Americana server. I haven't told Brian yet, but uh, we're already using showing Americana on the homepage of OpenStreetMap.us. Um, so just another use of, of those tiles that we're uh, working on supporting. So if you, this is a logistics page for State of the Map US, so I encourage everyone to, to go check that out as well. It's upcoming in June. Uh, it localizes dates and times. So if you're viewing the conference schedule, you'll see it in your local time zone. If you're viewing uh, um, an in-person conference, it'll show the date and time for the time zone where the conference is located. Uh, if you're in Japan, I'm, I'm sorry, this conference was so early for you. Uh, there's dynamic event schedules as well. So it's not just a HTML table. You're seeing um, everything that's linked to different pages. And um, assuming I don't go over it, it'll say happening now. Um, on my talk, if you go to the page at the moment. Uh, we've rich video pages. So once uh, items are recorded and uploaded, you can um, view them right on the website instead of having to go to YouTube. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom, it'll say, oh, what's the next talk in the series? Uh, you can just go to the up next section and find that as well as find any projects that are mentioned in the talk. And for the first time, we have a combined talks archive um, from all of our conferences. And since everything's tagged, we can say, oh, let me uh, browse talks about buildings or about roads. Um, and you can find that, uh, that page as well on the site. And you can sign up for the newsletter on the site, which doesn't sound super exciting, but we do have awesome stuff in the newsletter. And you can see all the full newsletter archives as well. So if you haven't signed up yet, um, you know, like, oh, what happened in all the old newsletters? We actually have them cached and embedded in the site um, for uh, in perpetuity. Um, so you don't actually need to have been signed up when the newsletter was sent to, to read it. But I still encourage you to sign up for the newsletter because um, uh, the cached version only might be posted a few days later. I uh, want to make sure it goes straight to your inbox. So how do we do this? Um, it's made with Jekyll which is a static site generator. So we have a bunch of um, markdown files that uh, get rendered into HTML pages and then are hosted um, statically, which means it's the, the serverless, in quotes, uh, approach. Um, but also, uh, some people might wonder how we can have such an impressive site with all this. So we have liquid filters. Um, which is a Shopify technology that allows us to to link to different things from within the uh, the pages. We have Ruby plugins um, that also uh, extract the functionality and dynamic UI with JavaScript, of course. So that's why how we have all the um, the things that pop up in in forms to enter and things like that. And in Node.js, we have helper scripts like uh, caching all the newsletters. I wrote a script for that. We deployed that with GitHub Actions. So we're actually hosting for free on GitHub pages, which is super exciting because we used to um, host on Netlify, but now we don't have to do that. Uh, and if you're looking closely, you'll see that, that here on this page, it says the repository is private. Uh, and it is because we sometimes draft blog posts uh, that um, people aren't ready to see yet necessarily, make announcements, make subtle changes. Um, so it's it's convenient for us to have all that internal, but then why should you care about all the cool features that I built? Because this is you know open source. Well, announcing today, uh, we have open sourced the Jekyll theme that we're using for OpenStreetMap.us. It's called Dogwood after the um, a state flower of Virginia because this website was originally announced at State of the Map US in Richmond. You can go to OSM 
uh, us.github.io slash dogwood and, and check out the demo site that we have up for the theme. And of course you can go to GitHub to view the source code and contribute to that as well. I encourage you to get involved. Um, this is also on our swag store. The uh, I would like someone to review my edits, baby onesie, also available in adult sizes. <laughs> and as a developer, I, I always want someone to, to look at my code and see how it could be better. So if you have an idea for the website uh, or any of these projects, then that'd be the place to uh, to go do it. Um, a quick note on our charter projects. This is sort of outside my domain, but we've partnered with a Map Roulette, OSM Cha, and Open Historical Map to to help provide organizational structure to uh, to those projects. Um, if you don't know these projects, I, I encourage you to look them up and, and get involved. The year ahead in OSM Tech, OSM Yes Tech, uh, we're going to be building a Teach OSM sandbox so that teachers aren't having students a map directly in an OpenStreetMap database, and that'll be based on the public domain map uh, technology that we've already built. Expanding public domain map overall. Um, Improving our trails tooling, including uh, an open trail map that we're looking for uh, funding partners to help build out, and maybe even having an open street US tile server to to run um, the Americana tiles and other tiles that we need. Uh, on screen, you can see the two uh, workshops I'm giving tomorrow. We're doing a tool time to go do a deeper dive into these tools and help people get started hacking with them. At 12, uh, we're doing a mapathon uh, if you want to do some mapping with me. I'm a bit over time, but thanks everyone uh, for listening and have a great conference. That was awesome, Quincy. Thanks for the updates and the really thoughtful uh, new website for OpenStreetMap US. Um,